Hey guys, welcome to the first in my series of Guild Wars 2 guides and gameplay videos. Today we're talking about crafting in Guild Wars 2. We'll be looking at things from the Armorsmith perspective, but this information should apply to every crafting profession except cooking, which is a whole other beast. Keep in mind that this information is taken from the first pre-purchase beta weekend event, meaning that anything and everything is subject to change. If you're watching this after launch, keep an eye out for annotations in the video indicating changes. You can't make something from nothing, so let's start off by talking about how to gather raw materials. There are no gathering professions in Guild Wars 2. All you need to gather materials from different nodes are the appropriate tools, and these can be purchased from vendors that are fairly easy to find as soon as you enter any level 1 to 15 zone. You can see here this vendor offering a selection of tools and salvage kits. Let's freeze frame for a moment and go into a little more detail. First, let's talk about salvage kits. If you're new to the Guild Wars franchise, you might overlook the importance of these items. Salvage kits allow you to break down armor, weapons, and other items into raw materials. If you come across a piece of loot from a monster that's labeled as a salvage item, you can use a salvage kit to convert it to something useful. If you're serious about leveling a crafting profession in Guild Wars 2, you should always have some of these on hand. Note that crude salvage kits come in stacks of 15, and basic salvage kits come in stacks of 25. That makes them a fairly inexpensive way to supplement your accumulation of raw materials. Next up are the tools. You can see harvesting sickles, logging axes, and mining picks. Pay attention to the level requirement on these items. The iron version of these tools require that your character be level 10 in order to equip them. When you're just starting out, you'll want to get the rough tools. Even though the level requirement to equip the iron tools is 10, you won't actually find anything that requires them until you move into level 15 and higher areas. Once you've got the tools, the next step is to equip them on your character. Each type of tool has its own specific slot to equip it, and that's found in the lower right corner of your character sheet as shown here. You'll notice when we zoom in that each tool has a number on its icon. This represents the durability of the tool. Each time you use a tool to gather from a node, its durability decreases slightly. New tools start out at 100, and when their durability reaches 0, they simply disappear. It's a good idea to keep a close eye on your tool durability and have an extra tool on hand to swap in when your current tool breaks. Once you've got your tools equipped, it's time to go out hunting for nodes. Four nodes for mining. Trees for logging. and plants for harvesting. So that covers metal, wood, and plants. We still haven't talked about cloth or leather, and that's where salvage kits come in. As you fight monsters and gather loot, they'll sometimes drop salvage items like worn rags or different hides that you can break down with a salvage kit into raw cloth and leather goods. Remember that you can also salvage light armor for cloth, medium armor for leather, and heavy armor for ore. When you salvage weapons, they tend to give you either logs or ore. There's one final type of item you'll need that I haven't mentioned yet, and these are items that drop from monsters. I refer to these as stat items because they define what stats or attributes you get on the final goods that you produce. We're zoomed in here on an example. You can see the item name in blue, and right under that it says used to make insignias. Other similar items will say used to make inscriptions. And under that you can see a list of the trade skills that can make use of the item, and in brackets beside each skill is the skill level you need with that profession in order to use the stat item. I want to stress the importance of these items. You can gather all the raw materials you can carry, but without stat items you're not going to get very far with crafting. If you come across stat items that aren't used by your chosen craft professions, it's a safe bet they'll sell well on the marketplace. We're almost done with the gathering and supplies portion of the guide, but I just want to touch on two more miscellaneous details. First, you'll occasionally come across a recipe that requires an item that you can't find by gathering or farming mobs. Examples of this would be tin ore or different kinds of thread. These items are items that are bought from crafting trainers, and those trainers are always stationed near crafting stations. Lastly, when out in the world gathering, it's worth noting that ore nodes, trees, and plants are all individual to each character. You don't have to worry about racing to nodes to gather from them before another player gets there. You can have any number of players gather from a node, and they will all receive the same amount of loot as if only one person had gathered from it. 
We're finally on to the production end of things. I'm using a screenshot here of the armorsmithing craft station to quickly highlight a few details. First, all crafting stations are indicated by their appropriate icons on the main map as well as your mini map. Also, as mentioned previously, near every crafting station is an NPC that will allow you to learn that profession. In this case, we've got the armorsmithing trainer indicated by the shield and hammer icon over her head. Lastly, when you're close enough to a crafting station to use it, you'll get the interaction prompt. F is the default interaction key and pressing it will open the crafting interface. This is the crafting interface and specifically we're on the production pane. Let's just do a quick tour of the interface. In the upper left corner are the tabs you can use to switch between the production pane and the discovery pane. We'll go over the discovery pane in detail a little later. Listed down the left side of the production pane are all of my known recipes broken down into categories. Recipes shown in red are ones that I can't make yet. Every other color represents something I can currently make based on my level. Orange means it will grant good experience, green slightly less, blue means I will earn very little experience, and gray means it won't grant any experience at all. A number in brackets beside each item on the list indicates how many of that particular item I can make based on the materials I have on hand. At the top of the pane you can see the orange bar that indicates my progress towards the next crafting level and right beside that you can see my current crafting level. I've got some ingots and cloth to make and we'll use those to illustrate the very basics. When you select the recipe the materials list appears in the middle. You can see here that this recipe requires 10 copper ore and 1 lump of tin. At the bottom you can see I can enter a specific number of items to craft or I can choose to hit craft all to make as much as my on hand materials will allow. In this case I use craft all and off it goes. You can see the progress bar for each crafted item just above the craft all button and at the top you can see that for each completed item I'm earning experience towards the next crafting level. One of the neat things about crafting in Guild Wars 2 is that when you're crafting more than one of a specific kind of item it slowly speeds up. Gone are the days of going AFK while you wait on your character to finish making a bunch of basic materials. This insignia I'm about to make is one of the recipes that uses trophies, but I don't currently have any recipes that actually use the insignia. This will lead us into the use of the discovery pane. I can look at recipes I currently have to get a hint of what I might need to use with that insignia in order to create something. This boot recipe is one of the recipes I was taught when I first picked up the armorsmithing craft skill. You can see it requires a trophy, one bronze chain boot panel, and one jute boot lining. So let's make the boot panel and the boot lining and then hop over to the discovery pane and see what we can come up with. Now we're on the discovery pane. As you saw, I got here by clicking on the little anvil icon in the top left corner, and now let's do a quick overview. You'll notice first that the list of recipes has been replaced by a display of all of the items currently in my inventory that I can experiment with in order to potentially discover a new recipe. We still have the experience bar on the top of the pane, and below that in the middle are four boxes. I can drag items from my inventory on the left into these boxes, and then the dialog box on the bottom will tell me how many discoveries can be made with this item. Let's drag the chain boot panel and see what it says. You'll notice two things here. First, the dialog box on the bottom has lit up with some information. It tells me how many unknown recipes use this item and prompts me to add more. It also tells me the difficulty level of the current recipe. This is the crafting skill level required to make the item, but you'll notice that the craft button is grayed out. Also note that a bunch of the items in my inventory were grayed out as soon as I pulled the boot panel into one of the boxes. This tells me that none of the grayed out items can be combined with the boot panel in order to make anything. Let's drag the lining and the insignia into the boxes. We can see now that the dialog box is telling us that we're onto something and the craft button is no longer grayed out. When we press the craft button we make the item and three other important things happen. Amidst the glowy bits you can see first that we're shown exactly what we just made and what we used to make it. You'll also notice that the production pane tab is shining. This is just to indicate that the recipe for the item we just made has been added to our list of known recipes. Lastly, and maybe most importantly, look at the experience bar. You can see that we earned 403 experience for making the item and an additional 403 experience for discovering the recipe. 
Now, if you've stuck with me up to this point, your patience is about to be rewarded. Up until now, we've been covering the very basics, and now it's time to talk a little bit about how to maximize your crafting experience gains using the Discovery tab. I chose to level armor smithing and weapon smithing, and because of that, metal ore and trophies were always in short supply. That means that anything we can do to make best use out of those items in order to progress our crafting skill is good knowledge to have. I don't want this to get too mathy, but there are two possible scenarios that you might find yourself in. One is where you have a fair number of one specific kind of trophy, and the other is when you've got a variety of trophies available for use. Giving a bit of thought to how to make use of them can save you a considerable amount of extra time gathering and farming. Here I am a little farther along in leveling my armor smithing. You can see I only have trophies that will allow me to make healing embroidered jute insignias. I had found a spot where I was able to farm up the necessary trophy for this recipe at a reasonable rate, so that's what I did. As I scroll up here, you'll notice that the only recipes for components that would still grant experience are the bronze pauldron casing and the jute pauldron lining. The temptation here might be to make up a bunch of these and just make healing chain pauldrons for experience. That would grant me experience from one discovery, when in reality there's more experience to be gained from getting as many discoveries as possible. Because of that, I only make one of each of the components for the pauldrons and then head over to the discovery pane and combine everything together. You'll see here that I earn experience equal to about one and a half levels worth. If I were to just keep making healing chain pauldrons now, I'd get less than half of that for each additional one I made. So instead, I'm going to make components for other armor pieces and combine them with the healing insignias to milk as much discovery experience as I can. To help illustrate this, let's back up a bit. When I made the bronze pauldron casing, I earned 219 experience. When I made the jute pauldron lining, I also earned 219 experience. When I combined them with the insignia in the discovery pane, I earned 774 experience for the combine, and another 774 experience for the discovery. All told, I earned 1,986 experience for making the components and then combining them in the discovery pane. Because I've now discovered that recipe, I can't earn the discovery experience for it anymore. Now, each time you increase a level, the experience you earn for making a particular item decreases slightly, but for the sake of simplicity, let's assume it stays the same. If I were to make those same pauldrons again, I'd get the experience from making the casing and the lining, and the experience from the final combined but not the discovery, making the whole process worth 1,212 experience. So let's see what happens if we use the same insignia to generate a discovery using components that no longer grant experience. In this case we'll use the components for a helmet and then hop back over to the discovery pane and see what we get. Now we can see why discoveries are so important. We gain just shy of 1500 experience for discovering that helmet recipe, which is more than we would have gained from making the shoulders again, even though we didn't get any experience from making the helmet components. We can continue on like this as long as we have different types of armor to make. I'll go on to make leggings, gloves, and boots combined with the healing insignia to generate discoveries and gain levels rapidly. As long as the recipe for the insignia is orange, it doesn't matter whether the components earn experience or not. Using the insignia as part of a discovery is a tremendous way to earn experience. You'll notice after I make these legs and my level increases, when I go back to the production pane a whole bunch of new recipes have been added and they're all red. These are the new components and insignias I'll be able to make when my skill level reaches 75. Even though I can't use the red recipes yet, getting them now allows me to plan ahead a bit. I'm moving into the next tier of gathered materials and that will lead us into the second scenario. I'm a little farther along now with armor smithing. I'm now working with iron and wool instead of bronze and jute. You can see I've got materials to make three different kinds of insignias, but I just want to point out something quickly in order to avoid confusion. You can see as I'm making up all of these insignias that on one of them, I get a bonus to experience that shows up in a similar way to discovery experience. This is sort of like a critical success bonus, and shouldn't be confused with the discovery. It's just a neat little bonus you get from time to time. There's no need to start digging around to see what you just discovered. I'll blast through all of these insignias, and then it's time to stop and think about what to make with them. If you're making things for yourself or friends in guildies, that will obviously guide your decision-making process somewhat. At this point, I'm just working on advancing levels, so I'll make use of whatever I have on hand. 
What I don't have on hand, however, is the wool thread I need to make the wool components. That's something that's sold by the crafting trainers, so I'll just run over and buy some and then get back to work. Compared to before when I only had one kind of insignia to work with, now I've got three, so I'll make up components in batches of three and hop back over to the discovery pane. You can probably already tell where I'm going with this. More variety in insignias means more different kinds of gear to discover. In this case, I've made components for helmets and shoulders, and now it's just a matter of combining them with the insignias available to me in order to maximize my experience gains. If you wanted to get really crazy with it, you could also take into account which components require the fewest materials to make and focus on those. I know that in the case of armor smithing, chest armor components use more mats than any other gear slot, so I tend to leave chest recipe discoveries for last. All of the footage used in this guide was taken from the first pre-purchase beta weekend event. One thing to note is that in addition to the experience you get towards your crafting skill level, you're also supposed to get experience towards your character level from crafting as well. That wasn't working for this beta event, but it's something to keep in mind. If significant changes are made to the crafting system between now and launch, I'll either annotate this guide or just make a new version of it. I've covered everything you really need to know to get started, and I hope this guide has been useful to you. I'll be doing more Guild Wars 2 guides and gameplay videos leading up to and beyond official launch, so if you like what you see, click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks guys!